I was born and raised in Los Angeles County, California, by a drug boss. Yeah, you heard me correctly, by a drug boss. My grandfather on my mother's side served hard time in prison before I was born and sometime during my childhood. When you're in the lifestyle of smuggling drugs and making dirty money, a person is not the most attentive. Let's just say that they're probably not going to win the Parent of the Year Award. Fortunately for me, he was my grandparent. Grandparents have a special bond with their grandchildren. Being a drug boss, he wasn't able to be the parent that my mother needed him to be. So having grandchildren allows for a second chance to be there for his child in a different way. It allowed him to finally be a parent without the extra distraction and feel what it's like to truly be present in a child's life. My grandfather grew up in the segregated days where whites had their own schools, water fountains, barber shops, etc., and so did colored people. He grew up in a world of hate and also a mentality of everyone having their own place based on the color of their skin. Being that I'm a mixed girl of African and Hispanic descent, I didn't know how my grandfather would accept or treat me because according to society, I didn't fit into his world of color. I may be of mixed race, but that didn't stop my grandfather from loving me. Here's this middle-aged Mexican man with dark hair on his head, a dark mustache, and very light brown skin, taking care of different colored grandbabies. My grandfather, Daniel, had a smooth, suave look to him. He also had the type of look of a man you don't want to mess with. Some people say that he resembled the famous American actor, Robert De Niro, because he had an identical mole placement on his cheek. He had tattoos on his body, but only displayed them in private and always covered them when he went out. Tattoos to him were more an association to the lifestyle and not a form of art or expression. That's how he wanted to represent himself, but with class and style. This was my protector. When I had promoted from going to kindergarten to first grade, he was proudly there supporting me. He made sure to always dress sharp. He wore the stereotypical godfather ring and his watch. He was a man of business, even if it was drugs. We didn't necessarily look alike, but that didn't matter to me. What matters is that when my mother was working, he would make sure to speak highly of her. He would tell me, your mom is a good mom, mija. Don't you forget that. He was also there to show his love, commitment, and support to me and encourage me by telling me, good job, Miha, I'm so proud of you. Those values ironically are carried in the drug gang lifestyle. Once you start, you have to be committed and loyal to yourself, the people you work for, and that work for you. Time and time again, he would display these morals and values and instill them in me. He would say, don't wait for tomorrow what you can get done today. He was a man of productivity. He owned and managed multiple restaurants, expensive houses, and cars. He was a very busy man, but made time and money to spend with his family, especially his grandchildren. He taught me the value of time and management, that tomorrow isn't a guarantee for everyone. And so it reminds me to be proactive in anything I do, but most importantly, showing up for the people that I care about. To the world, he was just another drug dealing Mexican man, but to me, Grandpa Danny was my world. Growing up was difficult for me. My mother always worked and my stepfather, who I didn't know was my stepfather at the time, was verbally and physically abusive due to being an alcoholic. I had to ang attend anger management meetings at my elementary school. I assume it was because of the abuse I wasn't an angry girl. On the contrary, I was very, very friendly. So friendly that my grandpa, Danny, would tell me, what are you doing smiling at those men for? As we were in the grocery store, I had no idea I was doing anything wrong. I'm just smiling and being nice to people. You don't smile at older men. Do you understand me? But why, grandpa? Because older men are dirty and you don't know what they're thinking. They see a pretty little girl like you, 
and will want to take you. I thought what my grandfather was saying was harsh. And I didn't understand at the time that he was doing, just doing what he always did, protect me. I went on to my elementary school's anger management classes, but didn't feel like I belonged. It was difficult for me at a young age to process the abuse that my mother, myself, and my sister had experienced. Although my stepfather was an abusive drunk, my mother and my grandpa, Danny, taught me that I have a heavenly father that loves me. They instilled biblical principles in me, and I learned to rely on God as my source of strength when my mother and grandfather couldn't be there for me. As a strong follower of Jesus, I would get bullied and not defend myself. I thought, if Jesus didn't defend himself, then why should I? My protector wasn't too happy when he heard this. To be completely honest, he was furious. In his world, when someone was giving you problems, you face them and handle it. Unfortunately, my brain wasn't wired in a way to be violent. All I knew in my early middle school age life was to love God, love people, get good grades to make my family proud, and remain on the honor roll and cheerleading team. Cheerleading, honor roll, and anything that involved keeping me out at school longer was my escape from the toxic environment at home. School and being with my grandpa Danny were considered my safe spaces until one day at middle school when a girl named Regina had a problem with me. She was one of the popular girls in school that had her own little posse. One random day during PE period, Regina wanted to pick a fight with me. She came up to me and said, do you have a problem with me? I heard you were talking shit. I felt so confused and scared at this moment. I had no idea what she was talking about. I was hanging out with my friends who were stereotypical nerds. I responded with a confused look on my face and asked, what are you talking about? Again, she asked, why are you talking shit, huh? This time she pushed me. Don't touch me. I wouldn't touch your greasy ass as she pushed me again. The whole PE class was standing behind her while the teachers were nowhere to be found. I said, don't touch me. I can touch you if I want. Regina immediately slapped me in the face, and without hesitation, I slapped her back. I was in shock and flustered at the fact that this was my first real fight. I was not a fighter by any means. I had seen my grandmother and my tia fight growing up, but no one ever taught me, and I didn't care to learn. But on this day, Regina was talking to me, and my instincts had kicked in. It was the first time I had put hands on someone besides the casual cat fights I had with my sister at home. One decision can change the course of a person's life. That's exactly what happened to me the moment I went to the principal's office following the fight. I let the principal and vice principal know what had just taken place. I had, I had asked to call my mom. They allowed me to call my mom while also making me write a statement of exactly what happened. The vice principal had called to the PE teachers to send Regina to the office as well. The story of her ganging up on me during PE changed. Her statement couldn't have been further from the truth. In her statement, she said something along, along the lines of me starting a fight with her. The office already knew that I had been picked on by several others in the past. What was different in this case is that Vice Principal Rosales had told us he used to be a delinquent, a troubled youth because of his past. He made a vow to help his fel fellow Hispanic students to lead them on the right path, and Regina was one of those students. So now, I was looking at being suspended the very next day. My mother was in disbelief, and the principal still decided that I should not return to school the next day. My grandfather heard of this and was outraged. Two major things took place. One, my grandfather and my mom did not agree to let me continue attending a school, especially when that wasn't going to protect me and simply use me for my brain to score high on the school standardized testing. Two, my grandfather brought my older cousin who was known for fighting to come and beat the girl that started this whole scandal up. <laughs> Fortunately for Regina, she was nowhere to be found. It was a rough time for my grandfather. 
mother and I as they brought their valid concerns to the superintendent of my school district. Sadly, I changed schools and that was the end of it. As I grew older, one thing was made clear. My grandpa had my back. Unfortunately, his past caught up with him and he served more time in prison during my high school years. He kept his faith strong in God while he was in and would write to me, Miha, I love you and I'm always praying for you. Don't forget to keep your faith strong. He included worship songs in his letters that encouraged him during his time, but little did he know that it was encouraging me too. He didn't say, he didn't stay long because he was connected with family members of well-known district attorneys. When he got out, he continued being the person he always was. He had a big heart and my family and I had the pleasure in experiencing that. He always loved me, protected me, and prayed for me. And it was time to learn to do that for myself. This was a little section of my life where I had the pleasure of a drug boss raising me. I may not have adapted the lifestyle ways, but I have learned that I will always be a part of my grandfather and he will always be a part of me. He showed me the true value of the person that I am and the potential of who I can be. I can be loving and kind while also standing my ground and knowing my worth. As an adult, I get to pass down the unconditional love that he showed me to my daughter. That love knows no bounds between God, ourselves, and others. Most importantly, he taught me to stand up for myself because one day he might not be there to do so. That the number one person to love me, protect me, and to do right by me was me. However, I will always be the granddaughter of Daniel Antonio Guzman. I am Guzman. Danielle Uribe.